Have you ever wondered what it takes to become a scuba diver? Maybe you've heard it's expensive, time consuming, or even dangerous. Today, we're going to bust some myths and explore the real challenges of learning to dive. By the end of this video, you'll know if scuba diving is truly for you and how to easily become a scuba diver. Meet Sam. She's heard her colleagues raving about their underwater adventures, but she's skeptical. Further, how could she possibly fit scuba diving into her busy life? Not to mention the safety concerns that keep her up at night. But there's an undeniable allure, the idea of exploring whole new worlds beneath the waves. Let me show you how Sam's journey from skeptic to certified diver unfolds. It's a tale of overcoming fears, managing time, and discovering a passion she never knew existed. As we follow Sam's story, you'll see the challenges of learning to dive can lead to life-changing experiences. Ultimately, you'll understand why so many people are willing to take the plunge into the underwater world. As Sam dips her toes into the world of scuba diving, she uncovers a realm of beauty and danger lurking beneath the surface. What she discovers next will challenge everything she thought she knew about the underwater world. Let me show you how Sam's research reveals both the allure and the risks of this captivating sport. Sam's journey begins with a simple Google search. She types scuba diving for beginners and suddenly finds herself immersed in a sea of information. Her screen fills with vibrant images of coral reefs, schools of tropical fish, and divers gliding effortlessly through crystal clear waters. It's a visual feast that ignites her imagination and piques her interests. Eager to learn more, Sam reaches out to her diving friends. Their eyes light up as they recount their underwater adventures. They paint a vivid picture of alien landscapes, underwater canyons, and hidden caves, and vast seagrass meadows stretching as far as the eye can see. Sam listens, transfixed, as they describe encounters with intelligent marine life, playful dolphins, curious octopuses, and even majestic manta rays gliding overhead. But it's not just about the sights. Sam's friends emphasize the unique sensations of diving. They talk about the feeling of weightlessness, the ability to move in three dimensions, and the serene quiet broken only by the sound of bubbles. It's like flying, they say, but in a world more alien than outer space. As Sam delves deeper into her research, she discovers the social aspect of diving. She learns about dive buddies, post-dive briefs, and the camaraderie that develops when sharing extraordinary experiences. The idea of being part of this global community appeals to her. However, just as Sam's excitement reaches its peak, she stumbles upon the challenges that await new divers. Her enthusiasm wavers as she reads about buoyancy issues, the struggle to maintain perfect control underwater. She learns about equalization woes, the sometimes painful process of balancing ear pressure and sinuses as the diver descends. The term decompression sickness catches her eye and she finds herself falling down another rabbit hole of information. The potential risks seem daunting. Nitrogen bubbles in the bloodstream. The need for careful ascent planning and the importance of tables and computers. Then there are creatures that go bump in the dark. Sharks, while mostly harmless to divers, still evoke that primal fear in Sam. And what about getting lost at sea? The vastness of the ocean suddenly seems overwhelming. All these thoughts overwhelm Sam. She knew her friends were doing it safely and for a very long time. They wouldn't recommend her to do something that was outright dangerous. Her curiosity and research continued. Ultimately, while scuba diving does come with challenges, it's important to remember that millions of people safely enjoyed this sport every year. The key is proper training, respecting your limits, and gradually building experience. Despite the allure of the underwater world, some still hesitate to take the plunge. But what if the path to overcoming your diving fears was more straightforward than you thought? Let me show you how the scuba industry has turned fear management into a science, making the journey from a nervous novice to a seasoned diver smoother than ever. 
Sam's concerns about safety aren't unfounded, but they're not insurmountable either. The scuba diving industry has evolved significantly over the years, prioritizing safety at every turn. Today, it's a mature sport with mandatory certification process, much like getting your driver's license. This standardized approach ensures that every diver, regardless of their background, receives the same comprehensive training. Safety isn't just a buzzword. In scuba diving, it's the foundation of the entire sport. Dive operators, instructors, and even experienced divers all prioritize safety above all else. This culture of caution creates an environment where new divers like Sam can explore the underwater world with a peace of mind. But what about those specific fears that keep potential divers up at night? Let's address them head on. Many new divers worry about uncontrolled ascents, gear failure, sharks, deep water, running out of air, and claustrophobia. These concerns are all natural, but they're also manageable with proper experience and training. Let me show you how scuba training tackles these fears systematically. Take the fear of uncontrolled ascents, for instance. During training, divers learn to control their buoyancy using their buoyancy control device, or BCD. They practice adding air in small increments to avoid overinflation, which could lead to rapid ascents. This skill becomes second nature with practice, allowing divers to maintain their depth effortlessly. Gear failure is another common concern. Scuba training emphasizes equipment maintenance and pre-dive checks. Divers learn to inspect their gear thoroughly before each dive, significantly reducing the risk of equipment issues underwater. In the unlikely event of gear malfunction, they also learn emergency procedures such as buddy breathing. Scuba divers rely on redundancy, so if the worst case failure does happen, it just means the dive is ending a bit earlier than expected. If you're prepared, it can be handled naturally. The fear of sharks often looms large in the minds of new divers. However, training and experience helps put this fear into perspective. Divers learn that most shark species are not interested in humans as prey. They're taught to respect marine life and maintain a safe distance, reducing already low risk of negative encounters. Deep water anxiety is addressed through gradual exposure, training typically in shallow water allowing divers to build confidence before venturing deeper. As divers progress, they learn to trust their equipment and skills, finding comfort even in open water. The fear of running out of air is mitigated through proper dive planning and air management skills. Divers learn to monitor their air supply constantly and plan their dives conservatively. They're also taught to always dive with a buddy, providing an additional safety net and redundancies of air. For those worried about claustrophobia, scuba training offers techniques to manage anxiety underwater. Divers learn controlled breathing exercises and are taught to focus on the beauty of their surroundings rather than the feelings of confinement. It's important to realize that overcoming these fears isn't an overnight process. Scuba training is designed to be progressive and allowing divers to build their skills and confidence gradually. The world of diving is structured to encourage continuous learning, with advanced courses available for those who wish to expand their abilities and take on more challenging dives. Ultimately, the key to conquering scuba fears lies in education, practice, and gradual exposure. As Sam progresses through her research, she'll find that each successfully completed skill will build her confidence. The fears that once seem insurmountable become manageable challenges and eventually they will transform into the very things that make diving exciting. Keep in mind that every diver, even the most experienced ones, started as a beginner with their own set of fears. The difference is that they took that first step and allowed themselves to experience the wonders of the underwater world. With the fears addressed, the only way to really become a scuba diver is to start with a critical certification training process. 
This is called open water certification and is the only thing left standing in between you and becoming a scuba diver. Let me show you how the certification journey can be tailored to fit even the busiest of schedules while preparing you for that aquatic adventure beyond your wildest dreams. Sam, now convinced she wants to give scuba diving a try, faces her first decision. Should she opt for a discovery dive or go straight for open water certification? A discovery dive, also known as a try dive, is a supervised shallow water experience that gives you a taste of scuba diving without committing to a full course. Think of it as like a tandem skydive where you will always have an experienced person right by your side during the dive. It's perfect for those who are unsure if diving is for them. On the other hand, open water certification is a comprehensive course that qualifies you to dive independently. After weighing her options, Sam decides to go all in with the open water certification. It's a bold move, but one that will open a world of potential possibilities. But what is involved in an open water certification course? The Paddy Open Water Dive Course is one of the most popular certification programs, and it consists of three main components, knowledge development, confined water dives, and open water dives. The knowledge development part can be completed online at your own pace, making it perfect for busy professionals like Sam. Confined water dives take place in a pool or calm, shallow water, where you'll practice essential skills. Finally, the open water dives allow you to apply what you've learned in real underwater environments. Now you might be wondering about the time commitment. Typically, the course takes about four to seven days to complete if done consecutively. However, many dive centers offer flexible schedules allowing you to spread the training over several weekends or even months. This flexibility means that even with Sam's packed work schedule, she can find the time to pursue her newfound passion. Let's talk about the investment. The cost of an open water certification can vary depending on location and whether you need to rent the equipment. On average, you can expect to pay between $350 to $500 for the course. This might seem steep at first, but keep in mind that it's a one-time investment that opens up a lifetime of underwater opportunity. Further, the certification doesn't expire. Your skills might, but you'll always have the open water certification. Physical requirements for scuba diving are less demanding than you might think. While a basic level of fitness is helpful, you don't need to be an Olympic swimmer to enjoy diving. The course will include a swim test, typically a 200 meter swim with no time limit and a 10 minute water tread. But these are designed to ensure basic comfort rather than athletic prowess. As for gear, most training centers provide all the equipment necessary for the course. However, you will typically need to purchase your own mask, fins, and snorkel. These personal items ensure proper fit and hygiene. Don't worry about buying a full set of scuba gear, not yet. That can wait until you're sure diving is for you. Sam's first step in a diver's journey was to learn to breathe underwater. It was a strange sensation at first, inhaling from the regulator while submerged. She felt a moment of panic when she took her first breath, but with a bit of practice, it became more natural. Now let me show you how the course addresses those initial concerns that Sam had. Remember, her worries about buoyancy issues, equalization woes, decompression sickness, and marine life counters? The open water course is designed to tackle those head on. Buoyancy control is a fundamental skill that you'll practice extensively during your confined water dives. You'll learn to use your breath and BCD to achieve neutral buoyancy, allowing you to hover underwater it's like learning to fly, but in slow motion. Sam started off feeling buoyancy control was far from effortless, but I can assure you with time, it will feel more natural. Equalization techniques are another crucial part of the course. You'll learn various methods to equalize the pressure in your ears and sinuses as you descend, making your dives comfortable and safe. With practice, this becomes natural as swallowing. Sam needed to pay special attention to equalize often, starting at the boat. If she felt pain, she ascended up a bit until she could equalize and then proceeded down, and making sure to control her descent. Equalizing as frequently as possible along the way. 
The course also covers the science behind decompression sickness and how to avoid it. You'll learn about dive tables and dive computers, tools that help you plan safe dives and avoid this rare but serious condition. Knowledge is power and understanding the physics of diving goes a long way to alleviating those fears. Mass clearing is another skill that Sam anxiously practiced. Imagine water flooding into your mask. It's a common occurrence underwater. The key is to stay calm and use a simple technique to hold the mask while blowing out your nose to expel the water. You hold the top and then you blow through your nose until the water drains. It will likely take several blows, but you'll slowly purge the water with each one. It takes practice, but soon it becomes as natural as blinking. As for marine life encounters, the course teaches you to be a responsible diver, respecting the underwater environment and its inhabitants. You'll learn that most marine creatures, including sharks, are more curious than dangerous. The key is to observe without interfering, maintaining a safe distance that respects both you and the marine life. Sam was startled when she first spotted her first shark, but then she realized it was something to be respected more than fear as it gently swam away. Finally, the fear of getting lost at sea is addressed through navigation skills. You'll learn to use an underwater compass and natural navigation techniques, always diving with a buddy for added safety. Modern technologies such as a scuba diving GPS that you can use at the surface also provides an added extra layer of security. Further, you'll learn how to deploy a DSMB, that's a delayed surface marker buoy, while in the depths to notify others on the surface of your presence and where you are going. And so if there is a boat looking for you, you can notify them of your location and they can start tracking you. The open water certification course is more than just a set of classes. It's your passport to the underwater world. By the end of the course, you'll have completed four open water dives, typically over two days, and the first two dives are usually shallower, around 12 meters or 40 feet, while the final two can reach depths up to 18 meters or 60 feet. Certification is just the first step in a diver's journey. What if I told you then, the real test begins after the course ends? Sam's story reveals a surprising truth about learning to dive. Mastery isn't instant, but the payoff is worth every bubble. Let me show you how Sam's journey from certified diver to underwater explorer unfolds and the unexpected challenges she faces along the way. With her newly minted certification card in hand, Sam is eager to explore the underwater world. However, she quickly realizes that being officially qualified doesn't automatically make her a seasoned pro. During her first few post-certification dives, Sam struggles with buoyancy control often finding herself floating up or sinking down unintentionally. Equalization issues still persist, causing discomfort as she descends. The multitasking required underwater, monitoring air supply, checking depth, maintaining buoyancy, and navigating leaves her feeling overwhelmed and unable to fully appreciate the marine life around her, the very reason that she got into it. It's important to realize that Sam's experience is not unique. Many new divers face similar challenges as they transition from a structured environment of a course to real-world diving scenarios. The most crucial thing for Sam at this stage is to keep diving regularly, practicing the skills she learned during her open water certification course in calm and beginner-friendly dives. Let me show you how persistence and practice can transform a novice diver into a confident underwater explorer. Think of it like learning how to drive a car. When you first get behind a wheel, every action requires conscious thought, remembering who has the right of way, checking the mirrors, signaling turns. But with time and practice, these actions become second nature, hardly requiring second thought, allowing you to focus on the road ahead and enjoy the journey of the road. Similarly, as Sam continues to dive, 
she gradually becomes more comfortable with her equipment and underwater skills. After about 30 dives, she starts to feel more like that pro she wanted to be. The buoyancy issues that once plagued her are now manageable with small unconscious adjustments. Equalization becomes a natural part of her descent routine. Most importantly, she's able to handle air management and navigation without constant focus freeing her mind to truly observe and appreciate all the wonderful wildlife that is in the underwater world around her. This progression is a common experience for new divers. The once basic skills become second nature. The real magic of diving begins. Sam finds herself noticing details she previously missed, the intricate patterns of an ornate nudibranch, the subtle color changes of a cuttlefish, or the graceful movements of a sea turtle. She's no longer just surviving underwater, she's thriving and exploring. What are the next steps for Sam's journey? As her confidence grows, so does her curiosity about different aspects of diving. She begins to explore options for continuing education, recognizing that there's always more to learn in the vast world of scuba. Advanced open water certification beckons offering the chance to refine her skills and try new types of diving such as night dives and underwater navigation. Specialty courses in underwater photography or marine life identification appeal to her, growing her fascination with this aquatic ecosystem. For those wanting to expand their tool set in diving, courses in nitrox diving or rescue diving provide new challenges and responsibilities. Each of these paths not only enhance Sam's skills, but also opens up new diving opportunities. With advanced training, she can explore deeper reefs, enter wrecks, or even dive in more challenging conditions. As she considers her next diving destination, these new skills will allow her to fully appreciate and safely explore those underwater environments she once thought were beyond her reach. Ultimately, becoming a proficient diver is a journey of continuous learning and experience. It's about gradually expanding your comfort zone, always with an eye for safety and a respect for the underwater world. As Sam looks ahead to her next diving adventure, she realizes that her open water certification was just the beginning of a lifelong passion for exploring this, this alien underwater world. Becoming a scuba diver isn't just about learning new skills. It's about opening a door to a whole new world of adventure and discovery. The challenges may seem daunting at first, but with proper training and support, they're absolutely manageable for most people. Let me show you how this journey can transform your life. Imagine floating weightlessly through an underwater landscape, teeming with vibrant marine life. Each dive brings new wonders from a graceful sea turtle to intricate coral formations. This isn't just a hobby, it's a gateway to a deeper understanding of the planet's oceans and importance of preserving them. So why not take that first step as Sam did? Whether you're seeking adventure, tranquility, or a new perspective on the world, scuba diving offers it all. Remember, every experienced diver was once a beginner too. Now you might be wondering, once you start planning to get your open water certification, how can you prepare to make sure you do well? I have good news for you. I have the perfect series for you to continue watching and it will go over a lot of the basic beginner skills, equipment, and tips to help make sure you're prepared for the open water course and beyond. Check that out here. And until next time.